Professor Yun's The Evolution Theory from the Viewpoint of Christianity, The Thorough Analysis of the Descent or Origin of Man, Lecture 30, Chapter 19, Secondary Sexual Characters of Man. The chief distinction in the intellectual powers of the two sexes is shown by man's attaining to a high eminence in whatever he takes up then can woman, whether requiring deep thought, reason, or imagination, or merely the use of the senses and hands. They have to defend their females as well as their young from enemies all kinds and to hunt for their joint subsistence, and to avoid enemies or to attack them with success to capture wild animals and to fashion weapons requires the aid of the higher mental faculties, namely observation, reason, invention, or imagination. These various faculties will thus have been continually put up the test and selected during manhood. They will, moreover, have been strengthened by use during this same period of life. Consequently, in accordance with the principle often alluded to, we might expect that they would at least tend to be transmitted chiefly to the male offspring at the corresponding period of manhood. Without the higher powers of the imagination and the reason, no eminent success can be gained in many subjects. The latter faculties, as well as the former, will have been developed in man partly through sexual selection and partly through natural selection. As the struggle will have been during maturity, the characters gained will have been transmitted more fully to the male than to the female offspring. It accords in a striking manner with this view of the modification and reinforcement of many of our mental faculties by sexual selection, that firstly, they notoriously undergo a considerable change at puberty, and secondly, that eunuchs remain throughout life inferior in these same qualities. Thus, man has become superior to woman. The tendency in characters acquired by either sex late in life to be transmitted to the same sex at the same age, and of only acquired characters to be transmitted to both sexes are rules which, though general, do not always hold. The present inequality in mental power between the sexes would not be effaced by a similar course of early training, nor can it have been caused by their dissimilar early training. As before remarked of bodily strength, Although men do not now fight for their wives and this form of selection has passed away, yet during manhood, they generally undergo a severe struggle in order to maintain themselves and their families, and this will tend to keep up or even increase their mental powers, and as a consequence, the present inequality between the sexy. Voice and musical powers. In some species of quadrumena, there is a great difference between the adult sexes in the power of their voices and in the development of the vocal organs, and man appears to have inherited this difference from his early progenitors. His vocal cords are about one-third longer than in women or than in boys, and emasculation 
produces the same effect on him as on the lower animals. For it arrests that prominent growth of the thyroid, etc., which accompanies the elongation of the cords. With respect to the cause of this difference between the sexes, I have nothing to add to the remarks in the last chapter on the probable effects of the long continued use of the vocal organs by the male under the excitement of love, rage, and jealousy. Although the sounds emitted by animals of all kinds serve many purposes, a strong case can be made out that the vocal organs were primarily used and perfected in relation to the propagation of the species. Insects and some few spiders are the lowest animals which voluntarily produce any sound, and this is generally effected by the aid of beautifully constructed stridulating organs which are often confined to the males. The chief purpose appears to be either to call or charm the opposite sex. The lowest vertebrates which breathe air are amphibians, and of these frogs and toads possess vocal organs which are incessantly used during the breeding season, and which are often more highly developed in the male than in the female. The male alone of the tortoise utters a noise, and this only during the season of love. Male alligators roar or bellow during the same season. Everyone knows how much birds use their vocal organs as a means of courtship, and some species likewise perform what may be called instrumental music. In the class of mammals, the males of almost all the species use their voices during the breeding season much more than at any other time. The vocal organs of some quadrupeds are much more largely developed in the male than in the female, either permanently or temporarily during the breeding season and in most of the lower classes. The sounds produced by the males serve not only to call but to excite or allure the female. It is a surprising fact that we have not as yet any good evidence that these organs are used by male mammals to charm the females. Shalom.